the heading of the velocity vector of a ball is as shown. It's right here. It makes 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal. 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The velocity vector Vf has a magnitude of 17 meters per second. Meters per second is the unit. What is the horizontal component of the vector? That is our horizontal component and this is our vertical component. So question is what is the horizontal component Vfx and what is the vertical component Vfy. Whenever we kick a ball at an angle, it has a horizontal component and a vertical component. So we can replace each vector by its horizontal and vertical components. Once you have the horizontal and vertical components, it's as good as having a vector. So as this ball rises, its vertical speed is affected by gravity pulling it vertically down. For that reason, it reduces the speed and becomes almost zero at the very top. Only the vertical speed becomes zero. Now beyond that point, let's say the ball is right here. And again, again, here is our velocity vector. And we will have a horizontal component and a vertical component. Let's assume that the vector is V final. So we have Vfx and Vfy. What are Vfx and Vfy? Vfx is the horizontal component. And what is Vfy? The vertical component of the vector Vf. Again, we define our positive x and positive y as to the right and vertically up. So negative y is vertically down. A vector has horizontal and vertical components. These components can be positive, zero, or negative. A vector has magnitude and direction. So those are all things that you know. All right, if you make the triangle, if you make the triangle for the velocity vector Vf with the horizontal Vfx and the vertical Vfy, 90 degrees there, all right, so what is it that we see? We say that this angle is 60 degrees, and that is theta. This is our horizontal component, and this is our vertical component. So we are given the magnitude of the velocity vector, and what is that? 17. We are also given the angle, 60 degrees. Question is, can you find the x and y components? And the answer is yes. All right. Let us stick with magnitudes for the time being. I will look at every option out there. All right. What is cosine theta? Cosine theta is adjacent side to theta divided by hypotenuse. Do we know hypotenuse? Yes. Hypotenuse is Vf, magnitude of the velocity vector. And what is that? We don't know what Vfx is but we do know Vf and that is 17. So you see when you cross multiply, when you cross multiply, what do we get? We get Vfx is equal to Vfx is equal to Vf cosine theta. Do we know the magnitude of Vf? Yes. Do we know theta? Yes. Do we know cosine theta? Yes. So that's what we do here 17 times cosine 60 so we get 8.5 that is the magnitude remember we chose just the magnitudes so everything is positive now we have to make it into a vector right vector has magnitude and direction if you have a vector like this you know for sure that the x component is positive so add the positive x and we have the magnitude and the direction. How about the y component? Again, sine theta is 
Vfy over magnitude of Vf. Do we know the angle theta? Yes, 60. Do we know Vf, the magnitude of the velocity vector? Yes, 17. So when you cross multiply, you get the y component of the velocity vector is equal to 17 sine 60. Do not forget, this is our magnitude. And what is the direction? The direction is our vector is pointing down. Our vector is pointing down. Negative y, it is going down. It has to be a negative y. So magnitude and negative y combined makes it vector. So let's put it all together. What is the x component? 17 cosine 60, 8.5. What is the magnitude? 8.5. What is the direction? Positive x. And what is the interpretation? It is horizontally to the right. Makes sense. How about the vertical component? It is 17 sine 60 magnitude. What is the direction? Negative y. It is vertically down. It is pointing vertically down. What is the interpretation? It is pointing vertically down. So what is our magnitude of the velocity vector? 17. And we substitute the x component and the y component, square and add. And we see that 17 squared, which is the hypotenuse squared, is equal to x component squared plus y component squared. And it's very, very close. So that is a good check. And what is the angle? The angle is 60 degrees. And we can check it, substitute the numbers, tan inverse y component over x component, and you get 60. And do not forget, this angle is with respect to the horizontal. And that is a big deal, all right? Because we have horizontal and vertical, it's important that you know with respect to what. The angle is measured in this particular case with respect to the horizontal. All right. Let us look at the interpretation of the angle, all right? Many of you have learned this um, from different teachers. And if for some reason you are now confused because of the approach that we chose, and here is this approach for you, all right? So what is the interpretation, what is the interpretation of the angle, all right? So here is our vector, here is our vector and the vector is 60 degrees that way, right? And do not forget, if you have a vector like this, if you go, if you go like this, the angle theta is positive. But if you go like this, the angle is negative. So it is 60 degrees below the horizontal. So you have negative 60. And in that case, you just say we have x equals vf instead of going with cosine 60 just go with cosine negative 60 and you will see that your calculator will give you 0 0.5 positive all right so your x component is positive so all you have to do is get the angle with respect to the horizontal and depending upon whether it is positive or negative, just substitute that in there and you get the result as positive and negative. So you don't have to add the signs later. Okay? So once you have Vfx is positive, how about Vfy? Vfy is Vf sine negative 60. And negative 60 is negative 0 0.866. So because of that reason, the y component points down. So that is another approach for you all, all right? So what is the magnitude? 8.5. What is the direction? Positive x. What is the magnitude? When we substitute sine negative 60, negative 14.72. So magnitude is 14.722. The direction is negative y. So if you go clockwise, the angle is negative, substitute the angle and get x component as cosine and y component as sine. What happens if you measure the angle with respect to positive x? What happens if you go counterclockwise? From here to here, 90, 180, 270, and then your vector is like this. So what is the angle? 300. 
So again, you use cosine 300 and sine 300 and the results just come to you. From positive x to positive y, what do we have? 90. And then from here to here, it is another 90. And then from negative x to negative y is another 90. And then from there to 30 is 30. When you add up all these, we get 90, 180, 270 plus 30 is 300. 17 cosine 300 and you get positive. So 17 sine 300 and you get negative. So we get the positive and the negative for x and y components. For those of you who want to convert angles to radians, here, it, here is how you should do it. And this is George Matthew signing off. Good luck.